Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be checking out a video titled Why Europeans Hate Living in the United States. Absolutely, probably a billion reasons. Um, Europe is just a whole different place, man. Like, let's, let's be real. Europe is not like the United States. So there's probably a lot of reasons, but um, you guys can let me know why you wouldn't live in the United States. And if you've ever visited, um, what did which, what did you not like about the United States? And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video and recommendations. Leave those in the comment section down below or preferably hit that link in the pinned comment section and I'll check it out as soon as possible. Without further ado, let's get to this video. Since the 1700s, Europeans have been coming to the Americas in mass. That's starting to slow down. Why, you ask? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. I ran a survey asking foreigners to the U.S. would they want to live in the United States? If they said no, there was a follow-up question of why. I listed 50 different things that are most commonly talked about as negatives to the United States. And before you do, stop typing. Every country, every state, every small town, every village, every neighborhood has some negatives. Nothing's perfect. So this video is based on their responses. Now about the survey, I had a few answers from Africa and not many from Asia. Europe and South America gave the only decent amount of replies. Europe gave about 2,700 replies and South America gave a little over 2,100 replies. I got about 400 from Central America. So today we're looking at the European results to find out why Europeans won't move to the United States. Got it, get it, good, let's take a look. Less than 24 hours, you will have a thousand euros in your account. And then Boy, shut your ass, ass up, man. In just Number what are we talking about? Racial European Euro Europeans racial tension? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. Europeans ain't worried about racial tension. I don't understand that. I, I genuinely don't get that. I sincerely do not get that. 10 racial tensions. Yeah, we've always had racial tensions and really every country on the planet has racial tensions. The difference is we have ours on blast in the media every single day. Each political faction in the United States blaming the other faction for it. But the U.S. has a complex history of racial tensions and inequality perceived differently by Europeans who may not fully understand the social dynamics and historical context that we have here in the United States. Now, this can contribute to their concerns about discrimination and social cohesion. Side note, cohesion is one of my favorite words. One man named Gerald from Suffolk, which is in England, said he lived in Virginia for two years for a job. His wife is a very dark-skinned Indian, and he said she was treated very poorly. Actually, his exact phrase... I can't lie, Indians are treated really bad um, in the United States. Like, not, not every Indian is going to experience that. But I don't know what's this excessive hate towards Indians. I mean, um... African Americans, Black Americans, whatever the flip you want to be called, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, you know, darker skinned people do get hated on generally in, an, in the most unnecessary ways. However, I've seen the most insane things about Indians. Like, it's, it's just like, do people actually wake up in the morning and actually just hate on people just for absolutely no damn reason because they're different from you? It's the craziest shit, um, but yeah, it's stupid phrase was like a poor chimney sweep. Not totally sure what that is. Racial tensions got 111 votes. Wow. Ah, this is a good Number one. nine, access to public <coughs> transportation. Now, it's no secret that Europe has a much better public transportation system than here in the U.S. We've made great strides over the last couple decades, but we still lag far behind Europe, and this seems to bother them quite a bit. They aren't as obsessed with driving and owning a car as we are here in the United States. The United States is a car culture. They do make some amazing automobiles in Europe. They're just not on board with it as much as we are. But European cities often have have well-developed public transportation system, making car ownership optional for many residents, where we basically rely on it. There are a few cities in the United States where they have decent public transportation and you could pretty much live there without owning a car. Yes. New York City's a perfect example. Portland is pretty good in that respect. Same thing with Chicago. Chicago. Seattle has a solid public transportation system. One man <sighs> said Ireland's public transportation is better than the United States, and Ireland's is shit. Access to public transportation got 112 votes. 
I mean, it's it's a fact. the uh, The United States does not does not have a, a great public transportation. It's a simple fact is that. So, um, you can't defend that as an American. You cannot. Number eight, the IRS. Yeah, believe it or not, the IRS was a big complaint by foreigners, and they had a lot to say about it. This one, I think, got the most comments out of all of them. Obviously, it didn't get the most votes. Here it is at number eight instead of number one, but the comments were definitely against the IRS and our tax system. A lot of the countries said that they don't have to file taxes. It's taken out of their checks automatically, and there's no, you know, tax day in their country. But a lot of them mentioned how much paperwork there was, and it was mind-blowing. One person said, and I kind of looked it up, and I found some facts about it, or just some things to support it, but it said the IRS is so much of a pain that American citizens are often denied banking facilities in Asia. Now, don't hold me to that. That's just what one person said. I saw a couple things online about it. I don't know much about that one, but I thought that was strange. If anyone has more information on it, let me know in the comment section below. I mean, everyone in the United States hates the IRS, but now Europeans are hating it too. One man said, I haven't been to the US in 15 years. When I think about the three times I had to fill out tax forms, he called it the Americas. He said, I get pissed. Taxes and the IRS got 127 votes. <laughs> I, it's kind of understandable and um, it's not like I don't know why but this should have been placed in a more uh, generalized group as taxes. Why? Because there's a lot more to the taxes in the United States. Taxes in the United States doesn't really actually benefit um, the population of the United States as much as taxes in European countries benefits the population of European countries, if that makes sense. Meaning you have public, um, a lot more for the public, right? Yeah, you have public schools in the United States, but you, you gotta pay for uh, college, university, whatever you wanna call it. And in, the, in, in Europe, the taxes cover these things and healthcare and so on and so forth. I don't have to list the entire thing, right? So um, taxes is, is way broader than just paying taxes if that makes sense it's it, also the benefits of the taxes is probably superb in my humble opinion you guys can let me know what you think if it's um something that um is actually very much more important than just filing taxes the benefits that you get from your taxes work-life balance okay Number seven, work-life balance. I also put free time on there because a lot of people don't understand it as work-life balance in other countries. They call it their free time or their vacation time, different things like that. Anyway, many European countries prioritize work-life balance with shorter work hours, generous vacation time, and strong labor protections. In contrast, the United States is known for longer work hours, fewer vacation days, and a culture that often prioritizes work over personal time. And that's true to a degree. I mean, all of us know that we have a pretty crappy work-life balance here in the United States. Now, there are other countries, especially in Asia, that are far worse than us here in the U.S., but they're comparing Europe to the United States, not Asia. So that's where a lot of these responses came from. One man said, my wife made us come back to Switzerland because she said she started to forget what I look like. One lady, I'm assuming she was a lady, but she said, one week I saw the Uber Eats guy more than my boyfriend. So we came back to London. Work-life... No, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> If you're seeing the Uber Eats guy more than your boyfriend, that sounds like a you problem. I'm just saying, you're take, you're not eating the way how Europeans are normally eating. Europeans go out to eat. They don't order in, you know, like even in Finland, there's a thing known as Foodora and they gotta advertise that thing. You don't advertise Uber Eats like that. You gotta advertise that in Europe because nobody's doing it, you know what I mean? So balance or free time got 130 votes number six the healthcare system. Mm. It's pretty bad that used car lots have a better reputation than the healthcare system here in the United States. Everybody knows if you go to a hospital or you have a doctor's appointment, you're gonna get ripped off. At a used car lot, 50-50 chance you're getting ripped off. One man said while living in Miami, he was playing a soccer game or football, he said, and he blew out his knee. He could walk, but it needed to be operated on. And he said it was far cheaper to fly back to the UK, rent an Airbnb, get surgery, recover for three days in an Airbnb and fly back to the U.S. On a personal note, not in the survey, but I knew a girl that she was a San Diego sheriff. I went to school with her. She's retired now, but her father was older. He was actually a Los Angeles County sheriff. His medication as he got older was so expensive, 
she actually sold their house down there and she quit her job and moved up to Washington so she could go across the border into Canada and get his medication for a tenth the price. I had a long conversation with her about it. It was sad. This was a handful of years back. Yeah, I know people as well. I said this in a video that I released yesterday on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I know I know people as well who have been through the same situation. It's it's crazy. And this is what I was talking about with the tax situation. This is not mentioned. The public transportation, this, all of those are tax, right? So the same IRS is, res well, not really responsible, but the money that you're given should be, you know, making this better when it was next to impossible to have your medication sent from Canada to here in the United States. This one, though, should be no surprise to any American. We all know that our healthcare system is crazy expensive and complicated. It's good and you get good results, but it's too expensive for most Americans to actually afford. And the Europeans know this, and it kind of stops a lot of them from coming here. In 2022, they did a study where they figured out the per capita healthcare expenditure by developed countries. Down towards the bottom, you had Mexico with about $1,100 a year, Brazil, $1,500 a year. You get up to Poland, it's about $2,900 a year. Spain was $4,400 a year. Korea is about $4,500 a year. UK is about $5,400 a year. Denmark, you get all the way up into $6,270 a year. Australia's 6,596. Switzerland is $8,000. The US is the absolute most expensive, $12,555. That's per capita healthcare expenditure. A lot of the countries well below us have better results than we do here in the United States when it comes to our healthcare. Healthcare got 132 votes. Should have been more. Education, okay. Put in education above health is insane. I'm just saying. Put in education above health is insane. But um, I guess this is people who are looking for a better life and not really just thinking about their life in general. I don't know. So like younger people. Number five, education costs. Yeah, a lot of countries <laughs> in Europe, the education's really inexpensive when you compare it to the United States. Now, if you just look at public colleges, it's about $8,000 here in the United States on average. If you include the private colleges, it gets up to about 14,000. The United Kingdom is really close to what we got going on in the United States as far as cost goes. But other developed countries, it's a different story. Take a look at Japan, $5,228 a year. Canada is a little bit lower than that with $4,900 a year. You go to Australia, $4,700 a year. The Netherlands is $2,400 a year. Switzerland, $1,100 a year. France, $217. Germany, it's all free. No tuition. That's not even counting the, like your housing and all that stuff. One guy from Poland said he'd looked into coming to the United States, but it was far too expensive. I think he should have come to the United States because he had like five misspelled words. I don't know what's going on in the Poland school system, but never has two E's in it. 140 people voted for education cost. Hmm. That's a good one. Number four, political climate. Yes, it's not just a nightmare here in the United States. Our political climate is known throughout the world as a total mess right now. We have Americans at each other's throats over politics, which should not be a thing. Each side of the political spectrum, the politicians are convincing their people that the other side is trying to destroy the country. We've always had a little friction between the parties when it comes to politics here in the United States, but nothing like what's going on to this day. It's actually ridiculous. I don't care what political party you're from, watch the news and you'll notice like, let's say the same congressman, you know, a handful of congressmen will get on media outlet, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a radio show, whether it's a cable news channel or make a YouTube video. They have like the phrase of the week and they use it and they say it over and over and over till you start saying it. And it's both parties. Both parties will do this and it creates friction because basically they're telling you what to think. When they're all saying it at the same time, you start to take it as fact and it's just something they do they get together and they come up with the phrase of the week and like I said both parties do it no one's immune watch next time there's some kind of issue with the other party whichever you know one you follow and all of a sudden the other party has a you know an issue you'll see the politicians from whatever side you're on say the same thing over and over and over for about a week or two but the perceived political polarization and instability in the US, especially in recent years, may make Europeans wary of moving to a country with a political tension 
as high as we have here in the United States. The parties are so different from each other now, policies can fluctuate dramatically with the change of an administration. That scares a lot of people, especially if you're not from here and you realize it's just all a bunch of talk for the most part. Political climate got 144 votes. What? Number three, immigration policies. Now, this one's gonna seem a little strange, especially what we hear on the news these days, about people what? just flooding in across the southern border and all that stuff. But this is more to do with the process of people trying to get in here legally. Changes in immigration policies, such as restrictions on visa programs and pathways to citizenships may create uncertainty and make it more difficult for Europeans to navigate the immigration process. The amount of paperwork that's involved in this, why is this so high up? I don't get why is this so high up? This is insane. Now, it's pretty much that way for a lot of countries. I mean, no one's just got, you know, fill out your name and your address and you're a citizen. There's always some hoops to go through in every country, but the United States, it's a little hard to navigate. I heard Canada's really hard to navigate too, but that'll keep a lot of people away. Especially what we got going on in this country right now, there's gonna be policy changes left and right for the next few years, I guarantee. 210 people voted for immigration policies. But why? I don't... Language... What? It's English! Dude, I'm sorry, but... The things that are at the bottom of this list deserves to be on the top. Like, immigration? Language barrier? What are we talking about? Number two, language barriers. While English is widely spoken in the US, Europeans may still face challenges with accents, dialects, and language nuances that differ from what they're accustomed to, which could create communication barriers and feelings of isolation. Now, this is a big thing. We have some pretty serious shifts with the way we speak from state to state. <laughs> South is very different from what you got going on in California. You know, you could come here from Germany and go end up in a small town in Mississippi, they might actually look at someone from Mississippi and go, is this dude speaking English? What is going on here? Now, most Europeans do speak it. I mean, yeah, I, I get that, but it's not like it's that big of a deal. You're not gonna just go to Florida and then go to freaking Mississippi, Montana. You're not gonna do that unless you're just a tourist. Like if you're moving to the country, you're not gonna just try the entire country, right? I don't, I, like, I, I, I don't know. But like, I don't get it. Why would you be up in them villages? And, and what, what are you doing? You're trying to get, what's up? What, don't stray, bro. You got to stay on that road. Don't do dumb stuff. You get yourself hurt, man. Um, but yeah, I get it. The, the truth is in the United States, accents, it, it differs. Okay, it, it changes. And depending on how you're feeling as a person, you change how you speak, right? Many times I'm just talking and I'm just casually talking and if I get hyped, it's like I sound totally different than when I'm just speaking like right now. Like right now, I'm probably way more understandable. But if I get hyped, like watching something that is really exciting, then I start to speak and deviate, you know, so I get it. But number two on the list, nope. English. I shouldn't say most, but a higher rate than Americans speak other languages. So we do have a pretty serious language barrier for a lot of different people, and the dialects play a big part. I mean, I'm from California. I'm from a beach community, and some of the things I say on this channel, English-speaking people ask me what I'm talking about sometimes. But this one got more votes than I really thought it would. I mean, I didn't think this was much of a big deal, but it showed up at number two with 325 votes. That makes no sense. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called The Sweet Life for Briggs. It's about travel and cruises and stuff like that. There's a link for that down below. All right, on to number one. Ah, okay, this is, this is a fair, this is fair, this is fair. Number one, crime and gun violence. Yeah, this is fair, but when you compare this to the previous one, number two, it makes no sense because like if you're worried about accents, right? Like, me personally, right, I have family ties in the UK, so I can go visit the UK, but if I visited the UK, I'm not gonna go to places that I don't, like, that those people are not at. So it's kind of makes, it, it, it's, it's kind of confusing, and if I do move to the UK, I'm not gonna understand everything that they're saying, right? But as time, pro I, I, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, number one is valid, but number two is just not valid to me. I, 
What do you guys think? Like, I don't think so. Yes. And number this is three, the immigration. Like, what? Biggest one. While gun ownership is common in some European countries, the prevalence of firearms and high rates of gun violence in the U.S., along with relatively relaxed gun laws in some states, can be alarming to a lot of Europeans who are not accustomed to this type of culture. Now, I'm not taking a stance on either side. I own firearms. I was in the military. But we're talking about people from other countries coming to this country. And it is alarming to a lot of them. Especially when they see the high rate of shootings we have and how often firearms are used in crimes. One guy said, in America, you go to get a pint and you may never see home again. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of rough. Go to get a beer and someone's going to shoot you. I'm sure it happens, but it's not like an, you know, an hourly occurrence here in the United States. But yeah, compared to a lot of other countries, we have a ton of gun violence and a lot of crimes. I mean, no place is immune from crimes. We just have ours on blast in the media and online and everything else like that. So it's well, the truth is it's the media, whatever, whatever. But in reality, the um, the rate of being shot or the possibility of being shot in the United States compared to European countries is so different. Like. I heard of um, a murder that happened where I live at, right, in Finland right now, and that thing happened before I was even born. Let it's that really the perception that they have, how close it is to the reality of the situation, who knows. But we're talking about what they think. And they think the entire country is Southside Chicago, without really- <laughs> Ah, Chirac! Chirac! Anyways, um, mm, I don't, I don't think Europeans are wrong for what they said here. Um, these are vi very valid points. I, I would say, you're not gonna just get shot like that, you know, roaming the streets in the United States. Um, what potentially could happen is that you, you're on the wrong side of the street, if that makes sense, right? So you go to places where you're not supposed to be, and you can visibly tell when you're not supposed to go to a specific location. You can tell. It's very obvious, right? And um, that is one thing that you might do. And number two is the public gatherings and public events. But that's the thing. Europeans love public gatherings and public events. And that's really where most mass shooting will take place. And um, why was there no school shooting on this list? I like this list because there were valid points on it. But I think a lot of the shit on here was just straight bullshit. Like the the ordering i think it was bullshit but i think this was, was pretty valid because at least number one actually made sense but um yeah don't be too scared of the united states with the gun situation what i will say is try to hit you up somebody who is in the united states and you can hang with them you should be much safer hanging with someone in the united states because they'll tell you hey that's not something we do over here you do that you might get you know what i'm saying you put yourself in danger if that makes sense right um so yeah, that's about it. But um, thank you guys for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.